Hi and welcome to Urinary Catheters DIY Problem Solving. My name's Tev Arho. I'm a urology consultant based in Cambridge and London in the UK and I'd like to offer a, a few tips and tricks um, to people who are currently stuck with urinary catheters um, in the hope that these things might help you to uh, avoid having to visit emergency departments um, and your general practitioners. So there are um, several things that are fairly commonly seen uh, in people who have uh, urinary catheters. Um, the first is uh, it's quite common to have some discomfort unfortunately in the area where the, uh, the, the, the catheter sorry, enters the body. Now um, in most cases in the UK um, the catheter is placed through the urethra um, but um, in some cases uh, where, where that is not possible then um, catheters can be placed through the lower part of the abdomen directly into the bladder. Um, the area chosen is normally just below the belt line. Um, with suprapubic catheters there's generally not too much issue with uh, discomfort but with urethral catheters there, there often is. Uh, both in men and in women. So um, if you are suffering from discomfort in the area um, where the uh, catheter enters the urethra, then you could use some um, KY jelly or lubricating jelly and just very gently put a bit of this uh, jelly around the uh, entrance point um, as, uh, as so. Um, just to help lubricate the uh, the catheter because it will move in and out very slightly and to avoid it grazing that area um, a bit of lubrication gel may help. Now um, the other thing that's uh, quite common with uh, urethral catheters is to see uh, some blood in the urine at times. Now uh, you may be wondering what level of blood should you be concerned about. There's a very good uh, and straightforward test you can use, the newspaper test where you can uh, grab a newspaper and put the, um, the urine in question in front of the, uh, the newspaper. And if you can see through it, as you can here, um, then you don't really need to do anything about that level of blood. That's fine. It will clear itself without any issues. Um, if you see this appearance and you can't see through at all, then that means um, you should uh, do something to try and um, lighten the color of the urine. Uh, there are two things you can do. The first is to increase your fluid intake. Um, so aim to drink about three to four liters of fluid over a 24 hour period. doesn't really matter what it is. Just increase your fluid intake to try and flush any uh, blood through. Um, the other thing to do is avoid any significant straining with your abdominal muscles, which may make the bleeding worse. So rest up a bit as well. And these things usually help even, with, even within uh, a few hours. Uh, if the bleeding uh, uh, just gets heavier and heavier and or if you see some blood clots or bits of blood, solid bits coming through the catheter and getting stuck in there, um, then you could try to um, flush uh, your catheter uh, with some water. Now, um, this also applies if uh, you're not seeing blood in the urine but you notice that your uh, drainage bag is not filling up, has stopped draining. And if you start to feel a bit of pressure building up in your bladder, that suggests that the catheter is blocked. So if you think you have a catheter blockage, um, then there are three things that you could try. The first is to um, uh, squeeze a bit, milk a bit on the um, catheter tubing at this level. So it's quite soft in this area. You can just squeeze like this. Um, to try and milk any little uh, bits of uh, debris or blood clots or whatever out of the catheter. Now, um, for those of you who have a leg bag on, there's, there'll be a bit of tubing downstream as well. You can also uh, milk this by just squeezing in and out like so. Um, and th these maneuvers may well uh, dislodge any uh, debris and, and it, hopefully it will then uh, come through into the bag and come down and out. If that fails, then um, you could um, uh, get into a nice uh, hot bath um, with the hope that um, the warmth of the bath may dissolve any bits of debris that are stuck in the tubing. 
So that's worth a try. If that doesn't work, then really the only option is to flush your catheter. Now you can actually do this yourself. You need a couple of things at home uh, to enable you to do this. And um, it, uh, the first thing is a, a catheter tip syringe. This is an example of a catheter tip syringe. You can buy these on um, Amazon or eBay if you don't have them already at home. Um, the uh, tip of the catheter, uh, the tip of the syringe uh, here is wider than the tip of a regular syringe, hence the term um, or the description catheter tip syringe. So when you're ordering these, if you're ordering them online, ensure that they are catheter tip syringes that you're ordering. The capacity is normally 50 or 60 mils. Um, so you need one of those to flush your catheter. You'll also need some water. Uh, I wouldn't uh, advise using tap water, but although if you have nothing else, then that, that will need to do. Um, the other, the, the better, a better option would be to just use some still drinking water. So uh, remember, still not fizzy. Um, and pour a bit of that into a uh, container that you might have in your kitchen, like a measuring jug, for instance. Make sure it's clean, um, though, first. Um, just pour a bit of the uh, still water into that and then um, draw some water up into the syringe by pulling back on the plunger until the syringe is full. You can then um, connect that to the end of your catheter like so. Ensure it's snug like you would for your bag or your flip flow va valve and then um, just very gently on the plunger push down uh, so you need to put it in more firmly than what I've done, obviously, just there. Um, push down very gently, and and uh, if you feel a little bit of resistance initially, that confirms that there is a blockage in, the, in your catheter. You can push a little bit more firmly until, hopefully, you feel it suddenly release. And um, that means that um, you have cleared the blockage. So even if you have cleared it, I would push all the fluid through to empty the syringe, but do, do this very gently. So when you're pushing fluid into your bladder through the catheter, always do that gently. Um, and then once you've done that, you can then pull back. Now you can pull back on the plunger as firmly as you like. You're not gonna do any harm to yourself. So pull back on that and then push in gently. Again, pull back again. You can do that quite firmly, as I said earlier. In and out a few times, just to be sure that you have properly cleared the blockage from your catheter. So it's um, a good idea, particularly if you're in isolation or you um, uh, 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 going away on holiday somewhere and you're going to be well away from medical support and you have a catheter, it is a good idea to get yourself um, a supply of these catheter tip syringes, um, ensure that you have some still drinking water with you and then um, you can potentially unblock your catheter if uh, you need to. Now, um, the other thing that can happen with um, catheters in place is urinary tract infections can occur. How do you know you have a urinary tract infection? Well, um, you can start to get some discomfort in the bladder area, low down in your tummy. In men, um, you can feel discomfort in the uh, uh, penis as well or in the scrotal area. Um, other changes that you might notice are just feeling generally unwell uh, along with this discomfort in this area. Uh, so if you're feeling a bit shivery, uh, flu-like type symptoms, or just not quite feeling right, and you also notice that the urine is a bit cloudy or a bit smelly, that suggests that you may well have a urinary tract infection. Now the only option uh, there is, is to have your urine tested, so you will need to seek medical advice to have urine tested and to be prescribed an appropriate antibiotic if necessary. Um, uh, the other issue that can arise is uh, the catheter can fall out of its own accord. If that happens, then um, and it happens in the middle of the night, for instance, you don't need to panic. Um, if your catheter was placed because you weren't able to pass urine properly, then um, you can simply wait and see what happens. You might actually be able to start peeing on your own. That might get you through to the morning. Um, if um, you um, start to fill up though, and pressure builds here, then you will need to um, visit your uh, emergency department, I'm afraid. Um, uh, so I hope these tips and tricks um, will help you to avoid uh, having to see a doctor uh, or a nurse 
and um, uh, I wish you all the best with your period of catheterization and I hope that comes to an end one way or the other um, as soon as possible for you and you get back to normal urination again if that is possible. Thanks for watching.